So if you have not take, taken proper care, okay. So hearing deficits, as I told you, it is divided into short-term transient problem, persistent problem. In the persistent, it can be either persistent middle ear infection or sensory neural deficits. What do you mean by the sensory neural deficits? Here, it is only the middle ear has been affected. In the sensory neural deficits, in case if it is going to this stage, the nerves which are responsible to transmit this audio signals, that can be harmed. So, when the nerves are harmed, it becomes very difficult for the child to regain its hearing capabilities. Okay? Then, the most common cause of hearing deficit is the ear infection. So, as I told you, and how do we assess this is by the whisper test. So, usually uh, the doctor, into specialist who is that? He just goes and whispers something. So, usually even with the whisper, that is a very slow pitched voice. The child should be able to hear in case if he is having a normal hearing pathway. In case not, he should be able to respond to this whisper test. Okay. We do have a tuning, uh, tuning fork of different frequencies which they usually use for the uh, measuring of the hearing capacity. Or else there is one more uh, instrument which is called as a tympanometry or acoustic reflexometry. This and all it is not required for you, it is just an additional information whatever I have given. You can just mention about the whisper test. Even in case if you want to find out, in case if there is a problem, you can always do this whisper test. Okay. So, these were about the ENT problems. Any doubts? Clear? So now the next, skin problems. Skin problems is becoming very common nowadays in most of them. Most of them have something or the other because of the lot of changes in the environment, because of pollution. So these are some of the common skin problems among the preschool children. So the first one is the insect bites. So why insect bites? Because most of the time they play outdoors. So, it can uh, any sort of insect bite can be there. So, this is just one example of the insect bite. So, this usually appears in clusters or rows. Whenever there is an insect bite, it so happens it can be either localized or it usually spreads. Usually, uh, it spreads in that area. You will have blisters, redness and you will swelling and itching. Okay? So, if, if, the, uh, if it itches a lot, it is going to spread again. Okay. So, what we usually do is, in case if there is an insect bite, immediately it has to be washed with the running tap water, cold water. Then apply any anti-allergic cream and give him an antihistamine tablet, maybe an anti-allergic tablet. So, usually we would give an Allegra or the Allure or usual citizen, whatever comes, any antihistamine tablet we give the child, so that the allergy reduces. Okay. So, this is one more which is called as eczema and atopic dermatitis. So, this is how it looks eczema. Can you see that? So, over the joint line you will have that dryness kind of an appearance. Okay? And usually eczema is basically an, uh, an, a dermatitis where it is runs in families, it is hereditary in nature basically. Okay? Eczema is hereditary in nature and is usually seen in the joints, creases. Wherever there is a joint crease, you can see the infection, allergy and this can spread also. So, why we should be conscious when it is when you see a child like that? Because the treatment has to be taken. So, because eczema runs in families and it is, it can be spreading, it can spread to the others also in the class, eczema if it is there. Okay? And it is usually, uh, as I told you, and it is usually seen in the skin, I mean in the joint creases, it is seen bilateral. That means if it is there in the right, it will be there in the left also. Okay? And uh, neck, centrally it will be there. So, if it is there in the knee, it will be there in the left knee as well. So, it will be bilateral. 
both the joints. respiratory tract. From there down it is the lower respiratory tract which starts from this from where the bronchus divides into two from there down underneath the lungs even in the lungs we do have different lobes okay that is the lower respiratory tract. Now we will see about the upper respiratory tract and I will say about the lower I will explain you then. Okay. So upper respiratory tract or the upper respiratory system includes the nose, mouth, sinuses and throat. Throat in the sense here we call it as a trachea. Hmm? So a child with the upper respiratory tract infection may feel uncomfortable and sound very congested. Other symptoms include a runny and a stuffy nose which we just discussed earlier. So the ENT problems, irritability, restlessness, poor appetite, decreased activity level. Then coughing when lying down, fever that occurs suddenly and may reach up to 105 or 104 degree Celsius. Sorry, uh, 101 to 102 degree Celsius. Here the fever might not be too very high in the upper respiratory tract. Okay. So all the common symptoms will be there. One is runny nose or the stuffy nose or they might have uh, sore throat, they might have uh, light fever, then cough. Okay. So now coming to the Next, lower respiratory tract, as I told you, lower down, we do have lot of parts in the lower respiratory tract, so I am not going to go in detail about it. So here also in the lungs, you just need to know this, lungs, right lung and left lung are further divided into lobes. We have lots of lobes which put together will form the lungs. In right we have 10 and in the left we have around uh, 8. So 8 plus 1, 9 is the one uh, with where the heart sits, one uh, lobe is less in the left lung. Okay. So when it comes to the lower respiratory tract, the symptoms may vary only very little. Sometimes it so happens you can't differentiate whether the infection is because of the upper respiratory tract or the lower respiratory tract. Okay. It sometimes goes unnoticed, clear? So when it comes to the lower, there might be shallow coughing throughout day and night, shallow coughing throughout day and night that means continuously coughing throughout day and night and there might be fever may be high such as a pneumonia. In the lower respiratory tract usually the fever goes up to 103, 104, 105, might go to 103, 104, that is the usual level which it goes the fever, there will be high fever. And difficulty in breathing that is called as dyspnea. D Y S P N O E A P is silent there. It is dyspnea. Okay. Difficulty in breathing that means he finds difficulty in taking breaths because the lower respiratory tract is involved and the effective place for the oxygen exchange is not available. Clear? Then there could be rapid breathing. Rapid breathing matlab tachypnea that is called as tachypnea. Then grunting heard during breathing out. You can hear sounds. So because of the cough, because of the, because of the secretions accumulated in the lungs, when the child is breathing in and out you can hear that grunting sounds. So even without a steth also sometimes you can hear. So that means it is a low respiratory tract infection. Then they might be wheezing. So when the child is breathing out, you can hear that hissing sound. You can hear that musical sound. We call it as a musical sound, where the airway collapses during exhaling. So that is wheezing. So if this persists for a long time, wheezing, okay, it can lead to collapse of the airway. Usually death happens in wheezing because of that. One is the work of, let it be the small children or the adults. Because of wheezing, the death happens because of the collapse of the airways 
and there is no effective uh, place for the oxygen exchange to take place. Work of breathing is increased that leads to fatigueness. Once it is fatigued, it can lead to coma. Okay. So, once it is there is no ex oxygen, what happens is that will in turn drive the, will stimulate the brain to produce toxic substances. Then that cycle starts when there is toxic toxicity, it can lead to coma and they can die eventually because of wheezing. Okay. It's very, very important that you need to take care of this wheezing. In case if the child, yeah, it's because of the uh, inflammation of the airways, that's one. And because of the, there might be a little bit of swelling in the initial stages. When there is a swelling, it so happens you don't have place for the air to go inside also, come out also. So, even though it has entered inside, when it is coming out, it has a very less space. When it is coming out of a less space, it makes that hissing sound. Okay. Then you can see flaring of nostrils using neck, chest and abdominal muscles to breathe. That means the child is having problem in breathing and his accessory muscles are active. That means he is having more breathing problem. So, there if you find anybody, okay, I will discuss in respiratory emergencies. Clear with this? 